Hello, and welcome to the South Coast Artist Index, where artists, performers, and writers, as well as curators, directors, and supporters, anyone with ties to the creative community, drops by to introduce themselves to you. We'll talk about their beginnings, their vision, their passion, and so much more. Hello, and welcome to our next podcast. I'm your host, Ron Fortier, and today's guest is a painter and much more. And as usual, I'll let her introduce herself uh, to you. And also, if you wouldn't mind to spell your name, uh, there, there's several reasons for that. Number one, sometimes people want to write your name down, they okay. want to contact you or whatever, and the only reference they have is to the podcast, so uh, that's, it's important. Okay, so okay. let me first to spell out my name. Sure. Okay, <laughs> J-U-D-I-T-H, Judith. Klein, K-L-E-I-N. Okay. And um, my assumption is, uh, another thing too, is do the people ever mangle your name? Oh, uh, they tell me Judy, and I'm correcting them, I'm Judy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. And Klein is the Klein I before usually, E or E before I. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right, right, then yeah. they need to write yeah. it sometimes, but, yeah. you know, because of Calvin Klein is... A lot of people exactly. kind of familiar with the image of the name. Exactly. and uh, No relationship. I'm going to shut off this phone because I totally forgot about oh, it. You know you've what? got yours too. Because yeah. you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to ring. Yes, <laughs> yes. Always rings yeah. when you don't want it to ring. So, Judith, um, you are named after a very famous biblical Mm-hmm. figure and all I can think of is Judith and Hall of Fernies <laughs> uh, and um, could you just give us a little bit about about Ju- Judith and Hall of Fernies and was it it was general Hall of Fernies wasn't it he was a general yeah I mean Judith you know was like a um, biblical heroic during a big revolution mm-hmm. that when the Romans were in the land of Israel and Greeks and um, and the revolution happened. That was that's a celebration of the uh, holiday Hanukkah, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she just uh, did what she thought is right to do to, you know, to, to find stop. the revolutionary and free the country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but um, I don't know if uh, my mom thought this is my Hebrew name, which mm-hmm. is in Hebrew. Spelled out Yehudit, Yehudit, which I became Judith here. Mm. But my other name that appears in my official name is actually Juliana. So I have Juliana official and ah. Yehudit, and I became Judith, which I liked always much better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also too, I, the reason why I ask is because you know what's going on in the country now, the timeliness uh-huh. of all of this. Uh, we just we just never know what's going to happen. It, it could uh. turn into a biblical thing. Now, uh, you were educated as I a was painter. Educate. I went to um, art high school. Uh, at the time, my major was graphic design and textile design. Uh, but we had a very wide education of sculpture, painting, drawing. Um, all my uh, professors were trained in mostly in Russian academics, so I got like so Russian really good academics. Yeah, wow. I'm, yeah. So they, you know, came to the how they used to teach in Europe. The yeah. real basic, a lot of drawing, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so I got very good basis, and then uh, I went on for a year. I studied uh, in a painting school. It's called in Israel, um, it was called Avni uh, Painting School, which is a renowned school in, in Israel. And then I went to Art Teachers College, um, and I taught public school for like three years in Israel. And um, I, yeah, and after that, got married, and both of us went to study in Italy, Milan. And I studied at Academia de Belle Arte in Milan after uh, that. That was... Um, that was in the 70s. In the 70s. And, yeah. and in, in Europe and obviously in the Middle East, uh, that's a traditional thing where students go to another country, uh, it, they're scholarship students, uh, 
Well, mm-hmm. you really didn't need that scholarship because mm-hmm. education in Europe is free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. uh, all you needed to get in, uh, to, get, to get your the diplomas, I have to apply. Okay. And if they accept me, that's it. Yeah. And the uh, only thing you had to pay when you went to the school and signed in, it was called Bolo, the state, state stamp, okay. which was, I don't know, $10. That's yeah. all the whole school c- year cost wow. me. Um, yeah. When you said art high school. Um, uh, art high school is, um, you have a very long day, half a day you four hours or five hours a day are only related to arts, from art history to studio work. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the day, until five or six o'clock, you study all the other subjects that you will study in a regular high school. I know there are a lot of people who think that we really, and we do, well, there's the, 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 the uh, performing arts school in New York. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, something school, like that. And my wife went to, uh, a high school in Detroit that the chancellor at UMass also mm-hmm. went to, uh, yeah. Cass. Yeah. Uh, and so if you can imagine what they call a mashup of vocational uh, studies and and um, the fine arts right. uh, put together, yeah. um, I, I think there's so many students who are just so frustrated that they, they, they don't have this outlet. Yeah, I mean... Here today, I'm quite, I mean, not is excellent, but mm-hmm. it's getting better mm-hmm. at work because mm-hmm. I have now a type student, you know, the program through the art museum, uh, mm-hmm. the teen art uh, mentorship. And uh, they they getting a quite a good education. I yes. mean, it can be better, you know, in many ways, right. but they got some good directions, yeah. you know, so it's something... Uh, you know, I think is is there now. You yeah. know, yeah. But I don't think is enough. You know. No, it, it's it's not. It's mm. not. I mean, both my my grandson this is his first year, and my uh, youngest daughter, uh, it's her second. She's going on her third year soon. Um, and uh, wow, it's it's a feeling, a great feeling to just know that they're in a safe place, and and the it's very rigorous. It's very rigorous. Um, the comparing educational systems between you know Europe, the Middle East, and here, um, <coughs> what are your thoughts about it? Well, it's changed there too. In Israel, it used to be really, really high level mm-hmm. at the time I went to school. Um, you know that generation retired, died out. That were my professors, <coughs> and the young generation is is different already. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, public school has problems, large classes and, you know, kind of similar like here. It's still, I find it still better Mm -hmm. than here. Well, you know, Israel is the size of Rhode Island, Mm -hmm. so country is small. So if it actually is a couple of very good art uh, high schools, Mm -hmm. so people can travel, you know, uh, from one side to the country, other just go to school, you know, so that makes a difference. When, uh, when and why uh, was your first trip here to the United States? Well, uh, our first trip, we were students in Milan, and my husband had here relatives that invited us for the summer when we had the summer break and oppor- offered the opportunity my husband to work so we can make some money, mm-hmm. you know, students. And uh, then we went back to Italy, and his uncle was very impressed, you know, with Andre's skills, my Mm -hmm. husband's skills, and said, oh, why don't you transfer to United States, finish your studies here, and you can also work, because in Italy is a problem. As a foreign student, you cannot work. Okay. I mean, you can work like a couple of hours a week, very limited. You cannot Mm -hmm. survive on that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, So that kind of... You know, <laughs> you, you I mean, we limit, really limit, liked yeah. it while we were here in the summer. It was right. beautiful, you know, yeah. our, this area is in the summer. Yeah. We thought, oh, wow, that's a gorgeous area to be in. And we were young and, yeah. you know, pick up our suitcases, come. I had by then uh, uh, almost a two-year-old little girl. And, uh, you know, we were like in our 20s. So we were like, so I said, okay, we'll 
finish your studies, the opportunity to able to work and, and study, and then we'll go back uh, to Israel. That was the plan. Yeah. What was your first impressions <laughs> of this country? Because uh, uh, my friend uh, John Matthew and I uh, worked on this video for the State Department. It was called the Fairhaven Project, uh, where they had, I believe, uh, six Israeli students and six Palestinian students, mm-hmm. and they put them on a boat mm-hmm. for the summer. And um, it, 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 it it, it, it was a, a very human mm-hmm. story to hear how they interacted with mm-hmm. each other. And, 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 and I remember Ari, who I still say is going to be the Prime Minister of Israel someday, uh-huh. which is something Could about be. this kid. But um, his first impression, he said, was like green. Mm-hmm. That he, he was like stunned by how yeah. green everything was. What was your first impression? What was everything green? Oh, here. Yeah, here. Everything oh, yeah, so yeah. Well... You know, I was born in Romania, Mm -hmm. uh, so similar climate like here, and emigrated to Israel at age of 14. Uh So, you know, the greenery, I seen it before, and you know, but it it just was, you know, everything seems everybody has a nice home and, you know, just in general. And summertime, I love the ocean and it was just really beautiful. Yes. How uh, has uh, your background, you know, uh, Romania, uh, uh, Israel, um, uh, Milan, and the United States, uh, has that affected you at all as a visual artist? Oh, of course, of course. You know, it's all stamped into your memory, all Mm -hmm. the visions that you grow up and see. And um, I was just thinking the other day that really what, influenced me as a young child and I think kind of set me in in an art world. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom worked for a theater in our city in Romania and uh, as a child I used to spend a lot of time you know watching rehearsals and just in the background what's going on in a theater and of course seeing a lot of plays and concerts I mean from age of I mean, you know four you yeah. know yeah. so uh, yeah so that's kind of started my visions of art and and I was surrounded uh, at our homes all words were paintings and went to museums and you know concert and you yeah know. yeah my uh, my uh, I worked in a theater as a set designer uh, my influences came from from a grand uncle in New York uh, and I think the exposure is is, mm-hmm. is so is so 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 important. As a child, I think that first impression, very yeah. young age, yeah. really stays with you. Yeah, it does. Uh, how would uh, you describe yourself as a painter? Uh, you know, what little slot or niche? Or well, uh, I'm genre? I'm a printmaker and painter, mm-hmm. um, and because of. My background that I studied graphic design, textile mm-hmm. design, uh, painting, and um, I mean, as you know, I was described as a critic that I'm kind of um, um, impressionistic expressionist. <laughs> An impressionistic expressionist. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I really like you know, Munch, Edvard Munch work, Matisse, you know, all that um, group. And, and um, I'm always, my eye is always for composition and color, and I mm. never look really so much for the story, what's happening, you know, okay. is that a boat or, uh, you know, is that a bird? I, I don't care, as, I- as long as... <laughs> looks right to me you know yeah. as a composition and the color division and the atmosphere that and how i relate to it you know and and you know so uh, and and that was part of my education i always was told the story is not important yeah That's, really it was yes. part of your education yeah you don't do any illustration it was right. if you do an illustration yes yeah. but if you do a painting, you are a real painter, yeah. you know, or printmaker, whatever. You know, the story, that's not the first place okay. that you have to look right. at it. Composition and color. Yeah. Because I always felt like an odd duck because, uh, you know, people would ask me, uh, uh, you know, what, what I'm trying to represent in my work, and I tell them nothing. My, <laughs> my, my attempt is to try to paint nothing. 
that by itself becomes something. Right. And painting sang foie, cold blooded, uh, right. because uh, I just no emotion, and yet emotions come through no matter what. It, you yeah, cannot yeah, help yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, in my case, uh, <clears throat> women always give me the biggest pushback. They, they, they. It's very bizarre how people who don't even know me, women, <coughs> again, I don't know why, women especially, maybe they're a little more um, uh, aware, or I, I don't know, tuned in, whatever, but they start telling me things about myself that would almost be impossible for them to know as I'm painting. Uh-huh, interesting. And, uh, well, I think women are more tuned in in their emotions mm -hmm. and more sensitive and intuition and yeah. all that together now in your audience is it women more or women, uh, men more or um that respond to my work mm -hmm. um hmm. I, I had you know a lot of women that really responded but i do have men that mm -hmm. respond to my work yes uh, i don't know if women more i know i have to do do, do, a <laughs> do the women's comments are they different from the men's comments um yeah yeah it, interestingly yeah men you know that make a comment is usually is interested how long it take me you know like yeah. the financial part right, right 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 how much is per an hour or something uh, like yeah, that you yeah, know yeah and i my answer is all my life oh yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, they don't want to pay fifteen hundred dollars for something that took you fifteen minutes. I don't know why they they, they think that, you know, to, that fifteen minutes was 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 the condensation. Of right, all exactly. Of your years something you can do in fifteen minutes, something fantastic, yeah. and you can spend three months, and it's still not what you want to be. Yeah. You know? Do you have? Do you go in cycles? <clears throat> do you have like you're going along and you're producing a piece, and oh, that one's good that one's finished oh that one's good that mm -hmm. one's finished and then there's that one piece that stares back at you and goes i'm not going away <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i had pieces like that and i also sometimes i pull out pieces that i did few years ago mm -hmm. and i see something that should be there or some and i change them i you know do some changes in some old pieces of mine really yes okay um, is, is it that one thing like out of the corner of your eye you're not even thinking about it and you're going like it needs a green dot like right there exactly exactly <laughs> and then finally it's like right do you also have pieces that you were neutral about it was like well I don't love it I don't hate it and then you it moves to a different location in the building or a different light hits it and all of a sudden you look at it and go oh my god I love this piece. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, light makes a huge difference. Yeah. In you know, color is is light. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you don't have color. Yeah. You know, so yeah. uh, I I always tell people, you know, that look at a piece. You know, let's look at it in a different light because the piece is changing. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you move it, it it yeah. it, it, it totally it totally uh, changes everything. Now, when you have a piece that you've been disappointed with for that moment. Uh, because like sometimes you know as we just mm -hmm. said the disappointment somehow fritters away and then all of a sudden you become amazed not expecting it um do you gesso over your work and start all over again or are you just uh, many times you do yeah yeah it's start all over yeah, yeah yeah um now printmaking and painting you know these are the questions that people want answers to do you consider yourself more of a printmaker than a painter or the other way around. I don't know. I go through periods when I, it was a few years, I only did printmaking, you mm -hmm. know, from woodcuts, you know, I know, cut monoprints. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to painting, you know, I kind of, you know, back and forth. One plays off the other. Yeah. Or what you learn. Yeah. And painting. actually, I incorporate some printmaking in my pieces too. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, now, you have always operated uh, I'm, I'm assuming uh, an artist's studio an artist's gallery meaning it's your work predominantly that's there. I mean not always I was for many years doing different exhibit I was teaching mm -hmm. art and uh, um, I was in different co-op galleries mm -hmm. 
And the last co-op galleries, we were on Purchase Street. It's called Mosaic. And that was uh, 11 years ago. And uh, then, I know, the group kind of started falling apart. Mosaic? I, yes. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Yeah, is... we were for a short time as Mosaic. Before that, we were on a Center Street and, and also at Artworks as a co-op gallery. Right. Uh, but any, I, I don't know, maybe a year we were as Mosaic there. Okay. Anyway, so when the group started falling apart, I l actually I found that space, you know, right next to the green bin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just loved the space and the rent was really reasonable at the time. And my friend Sheila Oliveira, she's an artist photographer, mm -hmm. uh, she said, Judith, it's time, you know, uh, just do it. Yeah. Take it over. Yeah. And I just, you know, jumped in a pool, you know, yeah. and started swimming. I, you know, I hanged shows many times. Mm. I, you know, uh, exhibited for years in different places. And, and uh, but, you know, I still never run, I know, a business type mm. of a thing. And, mm. um, you know, and at the time was so close to UMass also, mm. which... New you know, lo yeah, a lot of store. Yeah. right. Yeah. So it was. It started. People really wanted to show, and I was really. I think uh, Louis opened kind of the same time, uh, so but I was very visible the location. So, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a first gallery. Now, were you on the Travesia side of of the? Bristol yes, building? right. Okay. He well, what happened there after three years? He wanted to expand Traversia. He was mm. next door to yeah, me. Yeah. And uh, so the owner of the building, you know, he was going to sign a lease for a big space. And so I, I couldn't afford what he was going to pay. Right. So I had to move. And so that's then I moved to William, William Street. Street. Yeah. Um, and I think that was a jewelry store at one time way back. Oh, way, 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 yeah, way, yeah. way back. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. you were there how many years on William Street? And all and together, that's where I first met you. Right, yeah. right. All together, I was five years, you know, galleries mm -hmm. downtown between Purchase and William Street. So. And I had my studio, where is my gallery now, always, yeah. for many years. Yeah. And I shared it with the space with different artists mm -hmm. used to sublet from me. Yeah. And when I kind of burned out being open seven days a week, yeah. um, I said, you know, I have a nice big space. I developed a clientele and people, as so I moved and people followed me really. Yeah. So. yeah, so you were actually kind of a, a pioneer to the Kilburn Mills where you are now. Oh yeah, nobody had studios there. Yeah, I mean, there were one or two wild people there, but uh, no, no, as I'm, far as a business was concerned, right. uh, it, it was different. And then um, uh, Luis, uh, you know, the story he told me was he was... Well, he actually opened first. Uh, oh, he did? He, he was there, moved there first, because right, they uh, gave up the center street. Right, yes. Yeah, like a street, year yeah. before me. It yeah. was, okay, for some reason I, yeah. I was thinking, oh, maybe you were there because... I, I had my studio there. Oh, okay. okay. My studio was there. I don't know, last 20 years or more. I, I have to look it up All right. for a long, long All time. Right. So you did have a studio there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and right. I used to share with other artists because it was yeah. a big space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I said, I yeah. can, you know, just move, have the gallery and studio combined. It's a nice, large space. Yeah, because Luis, uh, and for, for people who don't know, Luis Villanueva had the Colo Colo Gallery on Center Street. And um, as he was telling me, he said, you know, I never answer the phone if I'm in the shower. It's ridiculous. I can wait. He says, but something told me to answer the phone. And he was told that he had, I don't know, 30 days that he had to leave, he had to leave his, his gallery because the building had been sold. Right. At the same time, I had been speaking with um, uh, Stephen um, um, Lefkowitz, mm -hmm. uh, who owned... The I know him well. Which, which was, used to own. Yeah, used to own. He yeah. and Larry, because uh, they, right. were, they were uh, right. one of my know, father's accounts. I know them very well, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and I said, well, Steve and I have been discussing the possibility of uh, why not develop something in that mill, because Hatch yeah, Street is all I talked in. to him about yeah, at the yeah. time, but it was already... 
kind of too late for him. You yeah, know, unfortunately, once he got rolling and then he found out, you know, he was ill and... and well, he's... So. Yeah, yeah, lot of issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing that in... If, if we go back uh, just a few short years, how much has changed mm. in the creative community um, and how many artists there are. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I very rarely can get out because you know we still have a teenage daughter. Uh, we work. Um, I try to fit any time that I've got doing this mm. and developing the Artist Index website project, mm. which is the mother of this. And then try to paint, and I know how important it is to to go out and network and connect, because we all complain about being isolated. All right, all right. And yet, a lot of that isolation is self-imposed because I don't know how some people do it. I uh, I just don't know how they do it. I I don't know if they 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 sleep. I, I don't what do you mean? Well, like Marsha Goodwin, she's everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. And well, I, you know, we've got to get her. On, we got. Yeah. I want to get her on the show. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, she's it's, funny. <laughs> yeah, she is like everywhere and supports yeah. everybody, and that's that's right. Phenomenal. And that's fantastic. Um, I mean, I'll I'll try to go as much as I can, yeah. but at this point of my life, I have grandchildren, and you see, yeah. you know, if I need to babysit, I just drop everything, yeah. cancel everything, yeah. you know. Yeah, and things are a bit. And that was one of my reasons to to move my yeah. gallery to studio because I can make my own schedule. I'm not so visible, yeah. like downtown. That you know. It's, would look wrong to be closed, yeah. you know, for a few days or yeah. a week or so. You know? Yeah, and then for some reason being closed was a sign of not doing well. Right, exactly. Versus I just can't be here all the time. Yeah, right, right. And oh. also the rent yeah. was high. You, yeah. I, I was working very hard to cover the rent. Yeah, and the rents just keep going Yeah, and, and I hear that for many people. I mean, Traversia just closed too. Yeah, well, he's been hired by... I know, I bank, know, right? but yeah. he couldn't... His rent doubled. Ah. Uh, yeah, uh, he wrote a whole letter. I, you must have gotten it, too. Ah, uh, yeah, about but it. again, I have read a it. pile of things Yeah, that I, I know, I you don't have time to read. read. <laughs> yeah, um, so right now at, at your current location, you you almost have like a small school going. Well, I, I have private students, mm -hmm. and I do every year the Thai program with mm -hmm. Art Museum, and mm -hmm. just right. I don't want much more. I really don't advertise. People approach me because between yeah. the exhibits, my own work, and teaching, yeah. just enough. <laughs> um, how have your students fared in the world? I mean, have they continued to go on to... Well, I have a couple of adults that all their life wanted to learn to paint and never had a chance. And now at that stage of their lives, they can dedicate to that passion. Uh -huh. um, and um, it's just, I guess, for their own passion or, you know, uh, they're not you know, I mean, I do when I do students exhibit, exhibit their work, but they just passion of learning and knowing yeah. uh, um, and then I have uh, some teens um, you know that take private lessons that can fit in in their school schedule you know taking mm -hmm. art or something mm -hmm. yeah and plus the Thai program is also teens I used to have young children but I stopped that I'm done. yeah <laughs> I yeah. did that for many years yeah too much um, do you have any interesting stories that you can share about your adult learners without really revealing who they are? Because I, I have a couple. I mean, it was like I was like stunned. I was sad, mm. almost at a very, you know. I, I was really emotionally affected by the stories of why these people later in life decided that they this was it. They had to learn how to paint. They had to learn mm. how to draw. Do you have stories about? Um, yeah, I can share. Uh, I mean, one of the adults that I'm teaching quite a few years now, um, she has a full-time job and uh, um, kind of supporting all her family. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, with a lot of issues, a lot of serious issues. Mm -hmm. And this is her outlet. This is her refuge when she comes to paint. Really? <laughs> Yes, uh, and she's good, and she's open 
you know, some adults are really, oh, I just want to do watercolor and just want to, you know, they're very mm -hmm. set in their mind. Yeah. But she's really anything that, any technique, any, you know, she wants to know it. So through the years, we're really covering from printmaking a lot of, lot of things. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I had uh, dozens of stories that were all very similar of adults who carried around this hole in their heart that mm. uh, they wanted to, to be artists, uh, they wanted to explore art more, and they were told to put those things down and mm -hmm. be an adult, uh, to be serious. Uh, they're like wounded birds. You're right. Yeah. And um, to see them throwing themselves into it, um, and then you know the frustrations that uh, they because they want to move faster than than a young student. The right. young student doesn't know the speed, but the adult right. wants to move faster and, and right. Faster. That's true. Yeah. 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 Um, well, we talked about your 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 childhood uh, <clears throat> and, and geographic influences, but what about your artistic influences? <coughs> uh, is there anybody who <clears throat> you've been chasing or chased you in your consciousness? Or um, I mostly I was influenced uh, in high school of m one of my professors that I mean he passed away a few years ago. What was ago. his name? His name is Moses Rosenthalis, and he's kind of internationally known, mm -hmm. exhibited a lot in the United States. And uh, um, he, I don't know, he just had a way, had a personality, very warm, uh, always constructive criticism, and never like put you down, made mm -hmm. you feel like, you know, you cannot do it, and uh, always something positive to say, mm -hmm. and uh, and, um, and not only his approach, but I loved his work. It just talked to me. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I, so I have a piece that, in my house. You <laughs> just carry that warm feeling with you. Yeah, with this yeah, person. and his style, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and. Um, uh, I, I think he was the one that really believed in me, mm -hmm. really, really believed in me. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 important. That's very, very important. Um, <coughs> where do you see yourself in the next five or ten years? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I kind of see myself continue to do what I'm doing now. Um, you know. Uh, my husband is still working and mm. is, you know, doesn't plan to retire. Yeah. Um, that's his passion, his work. And yeah. um, what does he do? He has a, a textile mill, a narrow webbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he used to work for all the fashion industry before moved to China, mm -hmm. and now he's all industrial. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know when you used to buy a pair of pants, used to come with a Realistic. belt. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's what's him. Yeah, yeah. You know, was yeah. braided or yeah. you can buy separate. I mean, he yeah. still does some, yeah. uh, you know, for some high-end stuff. But, right. uh, yeah, but that's yeah. his major uh, market. And retirement is, is dangerous for some people. It, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not good for everybody. No, yeah. no, you need to have a purpose yeah. uh, to get up, you know, put your feet on the floor in the morning and get up. Exactly. And start and start your, your your life going. When you're looking at the community, and we you know we were discussing about how many how how it's changed, how it's evolved. So, on, what are, what are your what are your perspectives? What, what what's your uh, <coughs> um, opinion of, of where things were, where things are, where do you think things are going? Mm. Well, um, I'm. I mean, it's definitely, you know, the community evolved, uh, um, you know, a lot of artists that, you know, find studio space inexpensive in this area still. Um, and um, so I'm sure, you know, we are really close to major cities and people will start discovering us. Mm -hmm. Uh, but still, the market here is expectation of people, you know, the same type of work. They won't pay here because it's New Bedford as much they 
with pay in New York and you know the expectation is just um, that, you know it, it, it's I, I've, I've actually used the creative economy when I was still teaching uh, marketing at, at, U, at the Charlton College of Business at UMass Dartmouth um, and the students would really put their shoulder to the wheel so to speak to try to figure out it just doesn't make any logical sense that a piece of work that no one will pay more than say two hundred dollars mm-hmm. for if if that here yeah when you move it to a to a city like Providence right. you might be able to double the price or even add a one in front of the price right if you move it to Boston now you could probably add a zero right. and a one yeah. to it you know one in the beginning and a zero at the yeah. end so now you're up to uh, you're up to uh, four figures and um, it just it just baffles me. I know in Portugal, for example, uh, the culture there was kind of weird. They really didn't like anything under glass. Mm-hmm. They preferred to have oh, really? canvas. Uh-huh. But the thing was, there was a status uh-huh. that you had to be somebody uh, in order to attract the pricing that you want. Uh-huh. And it would drive, it's still, you know, my friend Rui Beja, who's also the gallerist that Urashtru in Figueira de Forge, said he, it, 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 it just drove him insane. Mm-hmm. Yet, he said, the tourists would come into town, like the French, the, the Germans or whatever, and they would pay a price that he thought was like, well, God bless me, but I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but I still couldn't sell it here. Right. It's like that 80-20 rule. Most of, you know, 80% of your, uh, of, of your sales will come from the furthest point away, on, mm-hmm. you know, geographically. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think in Europe, the market is different because the culture, uh, the education of the arts is in your face. Yes. Wherever you go, you know, because yeah. the history and, you know, arts were always every place. Mm-hmm. In a state, unfortunately, you see, you know, the same McDonald's, the same, <laughs> wherever you go, you, you forget which city you are. Exactly. You know? Yeah, there's... And, yeah. you know, starts being, you know, some outdoor sculptural work here and there, but if really, if you travel Europe, is is every place no big deal? Yeah, you know yeah. that uh, every corner is a sculpture, or uh, yeah. every home has paintings. Yeah. you know that's yeah. And, and people, you know, when you introduce yourself, or, or they introduce themselves, they you know, what do you do? And you say you're a painter, and over there, it's like, oh, really? Have I seen your work? Is it in any right. publications? Is it a gallery yeah. right now? That's a big deal. Over here, you say the same thing to them. They're like, oh, you make a living doing that? Exactly. <laughs> so that's the <laughs> mentality. Yeah, it is It is a little, <clears throat> it is a little crazy. Um, we're getting close to uh, wrapping this up. And I always ask people um, to really, I guess it really is to get in touch with their mortality. Um, and what do you want to be known for when you, you know, when your time here on this planet is gone? What do you want to be known for or remembered for? Um, you know, uh, just that I made a little bit of tiny impact with my work on mm-hmm. somebody. Like just recently, I had a client that. She bought a couple of my pieces and she wrote me such beautiful letters that I get up in the morning and is writing, you know, where she hangs it in front of my room as I walk out yeah. and puts a smile on my face, you know? Yeah. And if you make people feel better with your work, then, you know, maybe I did something, a little something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's about... You know, the, 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 the reason for the question is because it's about when people try, you know, you, you try to get what they call the elevator speech. So mm-hmm. what is the Artist Index website project? I said, well, we're building a pyramid. You know, pyramids weren't built to preserve bodies. They were mm-hmm. built to preserve memory. Mm-hmm. And they felt that as long as your memory was, was, was recorded, mm-hmm. as long as people knew who you were, your soul would stay alive. Right. 
And um, I'm always curious about painters, you know, artists and generalists, to what they feel that their legacy or what they would like their legacy to be when, when they're no longer here. Um, and, um, you know, making, making, as you said, making a small impact. Anything else about that, that, that subject that uh, intrigues you or, or um, anything to add? No, I, I don't, you know, dwell on it, what, you know, going to be after I'm gone. But yeah. I, you know, have a few, you know, little anecdotes like mm. similar and, um, I think that's all it counts. I mean, uh, the first year when we visited here in the United States, they just opened up the North Dartmouth Mall. Mm -hmm. And they offered a huge art show, like, um, you know, like an art expo type of thing. It was 1971, yeah. Yes, all, you know, all the, between the stores in the hallway. And, And I did bring some stuff, you know, my, my work from Italy, and, and uh, so I exhibited. And I had a, I don't have a picture of it, unfortunately, a small painting, a mixed media. Um, it was, I think, I considered it quite good. Mm-hmm. It was a small piece. It was a very young couple. They introduced themselves, they're from Newport, and they kept walking back and forth. So they just love that piece, but they cannot afford it. Yeah. And, you know, the price you know, wasn't much I was asking, but still for them was a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and they just kept coming back. And I said, well, how much can you pay? And they told me, and yeah. I said, it's yours. Oh, End the, of the story. Yeah. Would you like and I always remember, I don't is? know, you know, I was young. I never recorded it. I yeah. was just so happy that somebody loved my work so much that yeah. they just, you know, yeah, wouldn't yeah. leave it, you know, yeah. so uh, I think that's it. That's, that's what you want. That's that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's what it's all about. Well, Judith, thank you so much. Uh, this You're wasn't welcome. that bad, Thank was you. Yeah. No, no, it was well lovely. <laughs> and, and again, uh, you know, again, uh, I tell everyone, this is not a one and done. I mean, um, a lot of guests will come here and they'll think, well, I have to like stuff my bi- bi- biography in here and I have to do my artist. Yeah, they can look my and, website and, and, and so, they yeah, see my Exactly. <laughs> so they think, they think, okay, this is uh, basically an audio version of my, my resume. And it can be that if you want, but it's also, it's, it's a conversation. So for example, that young couple, hopefully they're still together and, and they're still in Newport and they still have that piece. Uh, if they ever to, you know, to, to um, explain to friends about you, now they have a reference point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, you know, there's several reasons why we started this. One of them was because of Mary Jean Blasdale and, and her directory of New Bedford artists. Uh, before she published it, she was asking people to, there's 150 artist names that she had, but nothing else. Mm-hmm. She just wanted something about them. Who is that? Uh, Mary Jean Blasdale. She was the curator at the Whaling Museum. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then another another influence was, uh, I was writing for the uh, Brazilian uh, Tourism, of uh, Ministry of Tourism, mm-hmm. uh, like arm's length, basically. And they had something called Ital Cultural, mm-hmm. which was an online, I guess you'd call it an encyclopedia. Gotcha. And yeah. they had every single artist they could get their hands on, even if sometimes they had a just a name with a question mark next to it, or a name, a date of birth with a question mark mm. on it. And then they would just go and you know it would expand and expand That's and expand wonderful. as to what they had. Yeah. So that 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 always you know that always uh, uh, intrigued me. And, no, um, I think it's very important because nobody did it, and right. it's really, I mean, is the number of artists. I, I don't even know how much, but I always bump in. Oh, this one is here. This one is here. You well, know? there's 65 of them at uh, Hatch Street. Right, right. You and know? in our building, I didn't, don't even know at this point how many and, they and, are. And it's growing. Oh, it, I know. And it's growing. Know, it's I growing. Uh, and you know, the other influence was, I, you know, I've got to find it uh, and ask somebody out there. Uh, it was the Abstract Expressionists, and they shot it. Uh, it was a film because the video right. didn't really exist back then. They shot it with the artist sitting on ladders. Mm-hmm. Right. And I always remember that, and I said, "Wow, 
you know, to see a, a work, regardless of if it was Picasso yeah, or anybody, yeah, yeah. But during you see that a photograph of him and you see, and you see, you see his <clears throat> work, but not to hear the voice, not right. to see them move. Yeah. Because they are attached to each right. other. So that's, that's basically what all of this has is, is, uh, come down to. So, no, I um, think it's a great idea. And, thank you. And is needed, really. Thank you. Thank you. Because there's a large community here. Yes, there That's... is. In fact, um, uh, I have an, we have enough uh, people here to interview to last for a long time. Oh, I, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have one every week. Yeah. Uh, and we still have those that we have recorded. Like mm -hmm. yours won't show up now probably till April. Because mm -hmm. we have this backlog. Because right, right now... That's yeah, to the, edit everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask you. I, I was trying to fill up yesterday yeah. that thing and it was quite confusing. Hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's fine. I didn't know it's, no, still it's on. fine. It's fine. So, with that in mind, we'd like to uh, thank our guest, Judith Klein. Thank uh, you. And uh, hope that, uh, that you enjoyed this. And um, we look forward to having you join us again. Next time on the In Focus podcast, uh, brought to you by the Artist Index uh, website project and uh, artist, theartistindex.com. I'm your host, Ron Fortier, and until the next time, thank you. Bye-bye.